Hello. Good evening. It's uh, Friday, November 20th. God has shown, his, shown us his mercy once again today. And uh, a big burden was lifted off my back. Um, I won't give you the details because it's just something that, that's been wearing us out for a while. And, and for God to just do what he did today, just he's just showing us over and over and over again. By the way, that's a helicopter that's just going right by, right there. Rare to have a helicopter that close to uh, our property. Looks like he's going right along the highway. We have the Highway 52, about a half mile that way, that runs alongside of us. Behind me is the 11 acres. You see that little spruce out there where my finger is, right there. Um, right, I'm standing on the 10 acres that's part of our house property. And we've been privately uh, letting people know that we want to sell our uh, half of our property, it's 21 acres. And that, um, there's a barn right there. You can see the barn. And uh, in the front of that barn is a little road right, right down there. You can see the little road. That marks the front of the property, and then it goes all the way down to a river, which you've seen sometimes if you've watched any of the videos. So, letting you know a little bit about the land where we're at today, and um, I want to talk to you today about what moves the Lord's heart. Two extremes, um, idolatry and greed move his heart, but what does it cause the Lord to do? Jesus. If you turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 20, verse 45, it says that then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it. Who bought and sold. Those who were selling. Ever since I was a little kid, I've... Uh, wondered what it was like for Jesus to uh, whip and snap and scream and yell and how that all looked. I think people try to draw pictures and they showed tables being flipped over and coins falling off and they got, you imagine animals hurting out. Um, so many different images come into our mind. And the question is why would our Savior, who loves us so much that he's willing to leave the glory and the peace and the, and the wonder of heaven, why would our Savior, why would he get so upset that he would drive people, animals, and stuff out of the temple of God? We have to read what, what, what happened right before that. And what happened right before that is the blessedness that he received from the people because he was coming into town and he had been uh, recognized as a rabbi. He had been recognized as a leader, a teacher, and even as Messiah by some of the people. And he's making his preparations. He's got his colt. They, this, the disciples go and, and, and pick the colt that he told them to get. It was in such and such a place. And... He saw it in the spirit, and he selected uh, that colt, had never been ridden on, and then he rode that colt. It says in verse 37 of, of Luke 20, Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, <coughs> and that's very significant, the descent of the Mount of Olives. If you go to uh, Zechariah, I believe we're going to have to go to chapter... Um, 14 and verse 3, it says, Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, Olives which faces Jerusalem on the east. I've stood at this uh, location on our blog site, which is llifellowship.yolasite.com. Uh, there's some pictures down uh on the right hand side and they show us gathered uh, 
on the east side of Jerusalem. You see the east gate. They've rebuilt it. And that's the Lord's side. That's the side that he comes in. And the Mount of Olives is where he will stand with his actual feet. They're burning, hot, pure feet of Jesus. Brandish bronze will stand on that olive, that Mount of Olives, and it will literally split in half. And so in this instance, he's riding on this colt that had never been written on at the descent of Mount Olive. And the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice. These are followers of the Lamb of God. These are disciples of Jesus Christ. And they cry out and praise God with loud voices for all the mighty works that they had seen. These were works of restoration by raising up people from the place of, of being downcast and, and hurting, uh, turning them uh, from withered, uh, being withered and, and bent over, blind to seeing. He enabled people to, uh, who were hungry to eat. He cast out hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of demons. And their praise was going forth for all the mighty works that Jesus had done. And now, as he's riding on this colt, they say this in verse 38, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory on the highest. You're going to hear me say this a lot. Peace is only through Jesus Christ. There is no other peace other than in Jesus Christ. Transcendental meditation seances and all these attempts, drugs, uh, downers, lifters, uh, things that will help people feel better about themselves. All of that is false compared to the peace that comes from knowing Jesus Christ. He is the King of Peace. And he says, glory, they said glory in the highest. From the highest place of all existence came this peace, Jesus. And now he is lowly riding on a colt. He's not riding on a white horse. He's not riding with great pomp and circumstance. And he told the Pharisees, he said, If you do not praise me, the rocks would even cry out at this moment. All of nature is crying out. And these disciples, because of the mighty works, are saying, Glory, blessed is the King who has come in the name of the Lord. He is God, the Father's King. His is chosen vessel. Blessed is this Son of Heaven, the Son of Man. God said about Him that this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear Him. And 39, the Pharisees now, hearing this blessed uh, coronation of Jesus, which was do our Lord Jesus, do his name, do his fame, do his works. It all matched up with Jesus. It was not too much. If we could have piled more volume, more instruments, more people with real hearts of worship, if we could just put more on it, it would not be too much. Jesus deserves all the praise of Zion. But watch what the Pharisees do. They called to him from the crowd and they said, Teacher, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And sadly, the Pharisees are thinking that it is right for this rabbi Jesus to rebuke their praise, their worship, their honor. And is it not so today that we have many in the church who rebuke people who worship with all their heart? You remember uh, Saul's daughter, 